So we have um, our odor means smell, phonics means sound, and then now we need to answer the multiple choice question. So what does the word odor phonics mean? A, a device that transports people to different locations. B, a device that to test your sense of smell. C, a device that can produce real smells. Or D, a device that creates optical illusions. So because we broke down the word into odor, smell, phonics, sound, we can eliminate things that only talk about smell because then it wouldn't include the entire meaning of the word. So we can cross out B and C because a, a test that... or a device to test the sen your sense of smell is only about smell and has nothing to do with things you could see or he hear. Um, and a device that could produce real smells or... So again, that would only produce something you could smell. So we can eliminate B and C for that reason. And so then we're left with A, a device that transports people to different locations, or D, a device that creates optical illusions. I'm going to pause here. And if you need to pause the video, please do so that you can take a second to answer. And then we'll check it in just a couple of seconds. Go ahead and pause if you need to. Go ahead and... Um, Make sure that you have D circled if you did not. D is the answer because it is a combination of what you can see, what you can smell. You can tell based on the context that it also has to do with things that, or what you can smell, what you can hear phonics. And then the context tells us it's also having to do with things that you could see. So an optical illusion, optical, um, has to do with your eyes. So like you see an optrician to get, um, to get glasses. So Optics have to do with that. So optical would mean something that was created, an illusion to like fool you into thinking that you were really seeing something. And if you really think that you see something in front of you, you're going to be able to maybe like smell it, hear it, as well as see it. So D is the correct answer to one. Go ahead and scroll down to two. You can pause right here if you need to, um, to catch up on your notes in your notebook or adding to your Google Doc. Um... I'm going to move on to number two. Sorry, guys. Um, number two, uh, that's just it. I feel like I don't belong here. The house is wife and mother now and nursemaid. Can I compete with an African velt? Can I give a, bath, uh, give a bath and scrub the children as efficiently or quickly as the automatic scrub bath can? I cannot. End quotation. What does the word nursemaid mean? So in the... Um, in, in Google Docs, go ahead and double click on nursemaid. Go ahead and hit command or control B or select the bold function at the top. And when we look around this word, this one's a little bit different. So what's the gist of what's going on here? It's clearly dialogue. Someone is talking and they're saying something about what they're thinking or feeling. And I noticed the idea of the house's wife and mother now. Oh, like, oh, they're doing that now. Oh, so if I'm the one speaking, they're saying like, oh, someone is now the wife and mother. Oh, so the pro this is probably the like the mom in the story and therefore also the wife um, talking about her feelings. And she's like their wife and mother now and nursemaid. So if you break that down, nurse, we know nurses, like they take care of people. Um, and then maid, they tend to do some sort of work, right? So I'm going to say that nursemaid probably means someone who does some sort of work. And I'm going to infer, though, it has to do with kids, not just doing like what a nurse would do necessarily having to do with medical work. Um, but there, yeah, I'm going to infer that has to do with kids because she's talking about being a wife and a mother now, which then makes me think that a nursemaid is someone who does those type of jobs. Um, go ahead and take a second if you need to, to note that, make sure that you have bolded nursemaid and that you've added a similar description. That's it. Um, nursemaid means someone who takes care of kids. It says wife and mother now, which makes me think that nursemaid is someone who does these types of jobs and nursemaid is bolded in the context. That being said, um, you can pause here if you need to. Um, I am going to read the text for the questions upcoming in practice two and three. 
Um, what you can expect from practice two is multiple choice questions, just like number one. Um, what you can expect from practice three are multiple choice questions or not multiple choice questions, but short answer like question number two. Before you pause, please scroll all the way down to the exit ticket so I can make sure that we are all on the same page about our exit ticket. Um, your exit ticket is going to be cre um, completed in the Google form. I've also linked it on the assignment in Google Classroom, and I've linked it two different places on the exit ticket page in the Google Doc for you. I would suggest that just like with the notes, just like with the warm up, that you set up a page in your notebook um, for the exit ticket today. Um, today's not as like strenuous as some of the other ones are going to be where we're making inferences about the text once we read it to, like tomorrow. Um, but I think that you should just make it a good habit of taking these notes so that way you have them to refer back to. This is the like, although there is like this huge plus to doing some things digital, like you being able to put your exit ticket in through the form. This is also one of the negatives. You wouldn't necessarily have a copy of your work then. Um, your inferences, your ideas written down anywhere. And so you should get in a habit of like recording that, especially if like technology does fail us. If you have taken your notes, then you can prove that you did the work and you can get credit for it. Um, that also being said, our first round of our exit ticket mastery. Um, if you took the survey, you saw that I have an Instagram where I'll post those things. I'm probably going to be looking for a couple helpers who will screenshot and repost it on snap for people who don't have Insta. Um, if you're someone who doesn't have either of those things, please let me know and I will like email you or text it to you so you know if you've hit it. I'm just trying not to put too much in the Google Classroom so it's not confusing what you need to do when. Um, but yeah, if something's not working, just let me know. Um, I'm just trying to figure it out like you guys are and also make it fun. Okay. Um, if you don't want me to read the questions for you in practice two and three, you can just pause here and go ahead and work through those on your own. If you are someone who would like to listen to me read out the questions, I'm not going to talk through them, but I'll read directions and I'll read the questions and answer choices. Um, you can go ahead and scroll back up to practice number two now. If you're hopping off, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you at office hours, 10 to 10.30 every day. Practice number two, directions, annotate the text by bolding the word in the text provided, then read the multiple choice question and bold your final answer. Be sure to explain your answer using the complete sentence, using complete sentences in the box below the question. Use the criteria for success to check that you've done all the steps for each question. Number three, remarkable how the nursery caught the telepathic emanations of the children's minds and created life to fill their every desire. The children thought lions and there were lions. What does the word telepathic emanations mean? A, sympathetic situations. B, ideas that can discourage people. C, angry ideas from children. D, children's thoughts. Go ahead and pause here. Make sure you bold your or highlight your answer choice and then go ahead and explain your answer. Number four. I don't know anything, he said, except that I'm beginning to be sorry we bought that room for the children. If children are neurotic at all, a room like that. What does the word neurotic mean? A, having a hard time. B, having a feeling of being homesick. C, having trouble telling what is real or not real. D, having a nerve disease. Go ahead and pause here to select your answer. Explain it and work through the whole question in your notebook and Google Docs. Number five, who was it said, children are like carpets. They should be stepped on occasionally. We've never lifted a hand. They're insufferable. Let's admit it. They come and go when they like. They treat us as if we were offspring. What does the word insufferable mean? A, too hard to understand. B, too hard to deal with it. C, too depressed. D, too disturbed to reason with. Go ahead and pause here. Select your answer to number five and explain your answer. Number six, on you and your sister, if you intersperse this Africa with a little variety, oh, Sweden perhaps, or Denmark, or China, what does the word intersperse mean? A, remaining the same. B, adding variety. 
C, being too stubborn to change, or D, being well-traveled. Go ahead and pause here. If you are done with practice two and are gonna choose to do practice three without me reading it aloud, make sure you answer question six and explain your answer. Practice three, directions. Annotate the text by bolding the word in the text provided. Then in the box below the question, type your answer to the question. Be sure to explain your answer using complete sentences. Use the criteria for success to check that you've done all the steps for each question. Number seven. Well then, have a look at your R nursery. You saw it a year ago when you dropped by. Did you notice anything peculiar about it then? Can't say I did. The usual violence is a tendency to toward a slight paranoia here or there, you, usually in children because they feel persecuted by their parents constantly. But, oh, really nothing. What does the word paranoia mean? Explain why. Mm. Number eight. At dinner, they ate alone for Wendy and Peter were at a special plastic carnival across town and had televised home to say that they'd be late to go ahead eating. Eight. Mm. What does the word televised mean? Explain. My clue to you here is that televised does not mean the same thing as we normally know it to mean. Number nine, George Hadley stood on the African grassland alone. The lions looked up from their feeding, watching him. The only flaw in the illusion was the open door through which he could see his wife far down the dark hall, like a framed picture. What does the word illusion mean? Go ahead and pause here if you do not want the exit ticket read to you. Exit ticket. Directions. Complete the exit ticket by clicking here. Make sure you click on that link. And answering the questions in the form. I will only be grading the form for your answers. I would suggest setting up a part of your notebook for today's lesson and labeling it exit ticket so you can make notes about evidence and inferences as you read the texts. Number one. The lost camper sweltered in the heat of the desert desert sun. What does the word sweltered mean? A, ate, B, burned, C, slept, D, sunbathed. Number two, Congress put a tariff on overseas goods so the price would not be lower than domestic products. What does the word tariff mean? A, stamp, B, prohibition, C, add, D, tax. Number three, we often travel to New England in the autumn to see bright colors of the fall foliage. What does the word foliage mean? A, hurricane, B, place, C, snow, D, leave. Number four, the country cottage was just outside the quaint and picturesque town. What does the word picturesque mean? A, charming, B, running, C, ruined, D, perhaps. Number five, make a prediction. Based on the words from practice number one, two, and three, not the words on your exit ticket, make a prediction about what you think will happen in the short story, The Velt, remember The Velt means grassland, by Ray Bradbury, which we will look at in tomorrow's classwork. If you have not already, make sure you click here to complete the exit ticket in Google Forms. Have a great day, guys. See you tomorrow.